This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, May the 3rd, 2019. It's the feast day of Saints Philip and James the Lesser. Both were apostles of Jesus. And after the ascension and the descent of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, Philip made his way to modern day Greece, Syria, and Western Turkey, which was then called Phrygia. He was from the Jewish city of Bethsaida and was connected with Andrew and Peter, who were from the same town. Philip was one of the disciples of John the Baptist, who witnessed John call Jesus the Lamb of God. Philip went on to introduce Nathaniel, aka Bartholomew, to Jesus. He was also, according to tradition, at the wedding at Cana. And in John's Gospel, Philip is the one who Jesus turns to to feed the 5,000. Given his Greek name and his destination after Pentecost, Philip almost certainly spoke Greek and may have even been known to some of the Greek merchants that passed through Jerusalem. Now, Philip the Apostle is not the same person as Philip in Acts chapter 6, who is appointed to oversee charitable donations. James, the son of Alphaeus, a.k.a. James the Lesser, a.k.a. James the Younger, has to be distinguished from James the son of Zebedee, who is James the Older, a.k.a. James the Greater. James the Less doesn't get much screen time in the gospel, and when he does, he is easily confused with the other Jameses. So it's hard to say much about him. Tradition tells us that he preached in Egypt, and he died there by crucifixion sometime in the late 50s or early 60s AD. In art, James the Less is often seen holding a cloth-making tool called a fuller's club. James, like Paul, may have taken up the work of tent-making to fund his preaching, but there's just very little to go on about his actual story. Today in 1978, DEC, the Digital Equipment Corporation, which makes excellent office equipment and computer peripherals, did something perfectly innocuous. They sent a bulk message to every email address on the ARPANET, which was the internet before it became the World Wide Web. That message was an ad for computer equipment that they probably wanted to see and wanted to make response to. And without knowing it, DEC invented spam. Nowadays, spam makes up the vast majority of email traffic and it costs us billions of dollars in wasted hard drive space, computing cycles, and lost productivity. Now this isn't an ad. But for those who have a little red circle on their phone with three or more digits, consider unroll.me or click on your Gmail settings and tell the spam filter to be more aggressive. No 10% coupon is worth the hours of your life you'll waste wading through the junk mail. Today is the birthday in 1469 of Italian philosopher Niccolo Machiavelli. His most famous work is The Prince. It's a spiritual successor to Sun Tzu's classic work, The Art of War, and the spiritual ancestor to Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals. There are some folks who argue that The Prince is actually a parody, and that Machiavelli's model of the vicious tyrant was a function of sarcasm, but the book really doesn't read that way. Quote, if an injury has to be done to a man, it should be so severe that his vengeance need not be feared. Quote, it is much safer to be feared than loved because love is preserved by the link of obligation, which owing to the baseness of men is broken at every opportunity for their advantage. But fear preserves you by a dread of punishment which never fails. Machiavelli died in 1527, but his book remains a bestseller and it gets quoted a lot in manifestos. On a much happier note, today in 1903, Bing Crosby was born. He was at his height in the 30s, 40s, and 50s where he embodied classic Americana. He starred in The Bells of St. Mary's, Going My Way, and most importantly, White Christmas. He's remembered for his intimate vocal style, his classic dance technique, and as the voice of classic American Christmas. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.